with Jazzy Beauty Training Course for Nail Enhancement. And I'd like to also introduce my co-host today, also my model. Hey, <laughs> I'm Jackie. So <laughs> some of you've seen Jackie before. She's one of my favorite, favorite models to do because she lets me do anything. So that's the great, good part about having a model like Jackie. Yay. She doesn't even know what color we're doing today. <laughs> nope, everything's a surprise. <laughs> yes, so if you guys can see, uh, we are wearing our safety mask and Look how cute because they are. we they are I, so these ones have bling so yeah, i love these these are, these are doing really well actually uh, a lot of our techs are being able to go back to work now and so they need to wear protective masks and instead of those just normal disposable blue white ones uh, we have these now that are available so and these are washable and reusable and i i wear it all day long because we have to so another thing that I do want to mention is we are in Florida. Uh, right now it's about 8 p.m. And our state opened up for beauticians, nail techs, and hairdressers to go back to work this week. So it's been a week now. <laughs> I'm so excited. So Monday was the first day I went back into my salon after being closed for almost two months. And it felt really weird. But at the same time, it was okay because we were... We were we were ready because we we put we put shields between the nail stations. We all had masks on, and we also asked our clients to wear masks while they get a service. So, honestly, I'd say about eighty percent of the clients came in with their own mask, That's which is awesome. nice. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. And uh, one of the reason why they did that is because I think it helped that I posted on our website that to in order to get a service that you are mandatory to wear a mask when you're in the salon so that helped yeah so um other than that today we're going to be doing a demonstration so jackie i'm going to ask for you to go over there okay <laughs> so say bye to jackie you guys will see jackie's bye. hand uh, jackie's awesome because we just did her nails about two weeks ago and she's been doing a lot of painting so when we when you guys oh, get yeah. to see her nails Sorry. um make sure that she <laughs> you're supposed to say jackie well, once you guys see her nails, you'll understand because they're a little bit on the yellow side. I was painting bedroom doors, so and I you apologize. guys heard that, right? So she heard that she, you guys heard that she was painting her bedroom doors at home in the yellow color. Yeah. So if you yellow. see her nails and they're yellow, um, yeah, it's tint. really it's paint. <laughs> I promise it's paint. You'll see it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because Jackie's about six feet away from me right now because <laughs> I wanted to uh, talk to you guys a little bit easier. So today's class. We're going to be talking about some new bits that uh, Shining Design just got in. So these are really amazing. You're going to see everything a little bit backwards right now. When I turn the camera around, then we can uh, talk about what each bits are and what they're good for. Last or This Tuesday that just passed, I showed you guys the Russian manicure bits. And these are also amazing. And I'm going to be using both actually on Jackie's nails today because she's gonna be a fresh new set. Yay. So she's got no nails on her fingernails mm -hmm. at right now, no hybrid gel, no no anything. Nope. So I'm gonna be able <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be able to show you how to use our Russian manicure bits and also applying the hybrid gel system as a full set and then using all of our new tongues and bits as well. So the products that we're gonna be using for today's class is going to be our hybrid gel system and in this kit here which I have a couple different kits on the website but this is a kit that's great because you have everything that you need in order for you to get started so you've got the top and the base you've got eight different tubes of hybrid gel colors and it also comes with two different brushes and these are the only two brushes that you would need Actually, you'll only need this one for the application. So this is a great brush to have. I like to say hi to everybody that just joined us. And for those of you that are returning to our class, thank you so much for your support. And for anyone who is new, we like to welcome you. Oh, ooh, we got somebody from Ohio. Yes, please let us know where you're watching from. That It's really helpful for me to know that I'm reaching this class um, nationally. Uh, one of our main focus state is California, so I know a lot of our students are from the West Coast. I know I have a good following in the East Coast uh, 
from doing my shows before when we were able to do nail shows or beauty sh beauty expo and so i got a lot of followings through there so if you guys can help me do um just this one thing is help me share this class video onto your group onto your personal page that way we can also show other people that you can join this group and learn for free basically from the comfort of your own home at this time so that way um, we can grow a bigger following okay so another cool thing that we're going to be doing today is i'll be using one of the colors from this neon collection so if you guys can see right here we have <laughs> So Jackie would love to do yellow. I'm into yellow right now. <laughs> <laughs> what color would you guys like me to do on Jackie today? Can I get some response? Go ahead and comment straight into the live and let me know which color we should be using. And these colors are awesome because they do glow in the dark and they all glow really bright neon. I think the pink grows like a, a bright pink. So here are the colors. Just You can shout out the number or the color but i'm gonna do i was planning to do this purple but miss jackie wants to do purple and yellow go together yellow and she always wants me to mix it all <laughs> <laughs> i'm yeah. trying to just go for a theme okay purple and yellow is a theme <laughs> <laughs> hi vin from colorado Okay, so these are awesome. If you guys have not had a chance to grab this colors yet, these are nice because this is from our new collection. Okay, so um, just really quickly, if you guys are interested in those masks that we were wearing, I do have them in 10 different colors. They're all posted on our website and they are really nice. Like some of my favorite is like the blue one. I wear that with almost everything. I love the black. Black is yeah, very like limited that, so. stock, so if you guys want the black one, I suggest that you order that soon because they are going out the door. Because I know just like me, everybody wears black. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go ahead and put my mask back on. And then I'm going to go ahead and share this video first. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera. Okay, can't get that finger in there. Okay, all right. So give me one second as I um, share this onto my group. Hi, Demarise, welcome back. Okay, let's see. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. <clears throat> I'm going to give it a couple more minutes as we have more people to join. Okay, I think I got that. Okay, so I'm all set up. I'm able to read the comments at the same time as um, I do the class today. So if you guys do have any comments or questions, please let me know. All right, so these are our new bits that I like to share with you. So these are called our Rainbow Tunskin Carbide Bits. And what Tunskin is, is actually a very sturdy mineral from the earth. And they took that and they spun it somehow to make these carbide bits. So these are not just your regular e-file bits because the tungsten metal are a lot stronger, more durable. It definitely lasts over and over time. It doesn't wear off as easily as a regular carbide bit, and I'll show you some examples. So these are my traditional bits that I've been using, and you guys seen me use this over the past few months now, and they work fine. They're actually really durable, <clears throat> durable as well. They do last, but if you can see like some of my tips, I feel like they wear off a little bit easier than a tungsten carbide bit so you see the two difference here so sometimes um, you may have that issue because we use a lot of the tip of the bit a lot more than the rest of the body give me one second while I adjust the lighting on here so that way you guys can see a little bit more clear okay 
Okay. All right, how's that lighting? So if you see the tip of the bits, they're already pretty worn and I've only used this probably less than uh, three months. So I know that happens with the carbide bits. That's just something that it does. And with the tungsten bits, they actually last a lot longer. They don't have that same wear and tear. So over time, you're gonna see that these bits will last you a lot longer. They're so pretty. They are. I, I love the coloration in them as well. Um, so this first bit here, this is called a tornado bit. I know I use this bit a lot when we're removing product. Even if it's just to remove the surface while you're doing a fill or a polish change. I just shot a video earlier today on how to use these different bits. That's why you see my nails are really bare. And it's nice because you can also tell that, you know, the nails that I showed you guys uh, on Tuesday is still there. It still lasts really well. And my cuticles are still nicely pushed back and not a lot of regrowth. So this is my tornado bit that I use a lot for removal of any type of products. Uh, you can use this for acrylic system as well. If you're doing gels, you can remove the gel on the top before you do a fill. Um, I would say this is a little bit too strong for gel polish manicures. I wouldn't necessarily use this bit because it might cut too much too fast. So just for any sort of nail enhancement, that would be a good bit to use. So the next bit is going to be our safety bit. So this is a great bit because I use this bit to surface file over the entire nail. And I this is the second bit I use because I focus first around the cuticle area, which is the next bit I'm gonna talk about. So this bit here is great to go around the surface. So that way you know that wherever that needs to be filed off for it to be smooth, it, this bit is gonna do that for you. And the round tip in the front is also nice because it doesn't cut the skin. It's really safe to go around the cuticle area, but we, you wouldn't really need to use this bit around the cuticle area. There's one bit that I recommend that's even better. I like the shape of these, you know, it's so pretty. Thank you. So this bit here, this is called our cone tapered bit. So tapered cone bit, in any way you want to say. It has a medium grit. Um, oh, just quickly, this grit here, this was a fine grit, and that's what I used to surface file the top to make everything smooth. So this bit here is medium because I feel like you need a medium grit to clean up a little bit better around the cuticle area around here. And you see the circumference of this bit on the top is tapered. So it's very easy for us to see and view the areas that we're filing. So that way you won't have the chance of not seeing this blind spot and cutting the cuticle on the client. So that's a really nice bit. And this is one of my favorite, favorite bit that I've used for over I don't know, ever since it came out in the market, I've used it and I've never found anything else like it. So I love this tapered cone bit. Next bit I'm gonna show you is, this I would consider the under, under the nail cleaner bit, but also remember this bit is different from the carbide that I used to use. Because if you, you see the tungsten grooves, it's a lot different. So the quality is a lot different as well. So these bits that I'm showing you guys today, this is a, a higher quality, more professional set of bits that you can utilize for your services now. This bit here, uh, it's got these facets in there and it's really strong. So you don't wanna use this too fast or too hard on the nail. This is a great bit to also clean some of those little corners if you have to. But necessarily, this bit is great to go underneath the nail to clean off all those little extras. Okay, uh, you're gonna see me watch uh, use this bit around the cuticle uh, just a tiny bit, but with no pressure though. You wanna go as smooth as possible and sit the bit as flush. flat and flush to the nail bed as possible as well. You don't wanna angle this bit at all because this does have a nice point to it. So if it does, um, hi everybody. Hey, hi everybody. Hi, Michael. Michael just bought our uh, hybrid gel system. I'm looking forward to see your work, Michael. Okay, so let me go ahead and continue with this bit here. This is our ball point bit. 
and it's a medium grit. So this is also good for around the cuticle area to clean actually on top of the cuticle if there's any dry skin or hangnails. And you, I run this at a very low speed and it just helps me to really define the shape and also to remove any of those dry cuticle that are hanging around um, after you push back the skin. I'm gonna probably have some now. Normally, I don't have bad cuticles, but I've luckily, been luckily, our <laughs> model today has a lot of cuticles. <laughs> Normally, I don't though, and you know that. But. So we're gonna be able to see how these bits work. So this bit here, this is our basic mandrel bit, but it's not just a basic mandrel bit because it is different from what I used to use before. I want to show you this mandrel that already has a, a sanding band on it, and if I try to remove this. It's really, really hard to remove this. I have to actually put it back into my hand piece and then try to pull it out, which sometimes is, is stuck on there really hard. So I just wanna show you this bit because this bit is nice because it's got a couple different um, grooves in here to help you insert the bit it stays really secure but at the same time easy for you to remove as well so this is an easy on off mandrel bit you see that and we're putting um, disposable sanding bands on there so that way we can use for one client and then throw this away so we also have it's our it's for yet yeah, these are all sterilizable implements because they are made of metal so we can clean sterilize and reuse these bits on um, over time. So the other two, the last bit, let me just talk about this one. This is our cleaning. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is our dust brush bit. I love this one because it's so useful. Um, let's say you're done with all your service and you just use the brush to move the debris off. It's not enough because there's a lot of dust that collects underneath the cuticle area. So what this brush does is when it spins, it actually goes in there. Think of it like a toothbrush, how the toothbrush bristles go in deep and clean out any of those finer areas where you can't reach. So this is what that dust brush do, does. <laughs> I can't really expect, I'm gonna show you better when we're using it, it's, it's really nice. And to me, it feels like a little cuticle massage. So I do also have these two different types of sanding bands. These are the zebra sanding band bits, and so they are very durable. They are two, in two different grits. So 150 is coarse, 240 is more fine. They're both really useful. I use the medium grit, which is the 150, for when I'm prepping the nail bed. I use the 240 grit, which is the fine grit when I'm surface when I'm filing the surface of the nail bed to smooth and use as a buffer, which I like to do at the very, very end. That's my last step. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys also when I use these two different type of sanding band bits. So I hope you guys like our new bit set. I do. <laughs> we have a great promotion going on right now because these are brand new in the market for us and the promotion is if you uh, purchase this entire set you will get one box of sanding band bits and these are um, disposable so there are 100 pieces in per box and it's kept in this little sterile box like this so it's great I'll put all the links on the website after I mean the links on our video after we're done okay so I hope you guys do like our new bits I'm gonna go back to the bits that I use on Tuesday for the first time. So these are our Russian manicure bits. They're different than the tungsten bits. They're very, very different. So the purpose of these bits are to perform a nice manicure. Okay, so they come in a 10 piece set. They're also really beautiful, rainbow coated. And if you can see closely, these are not tongue skin, these are not carbides, these are diamond bits. So what that means is the metal, is, is this is like a one piece metal and the surface of it, it acts like almost like a, like a sandpaper, but with metal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are they um, as durable as what you normally use? 
They are durable if you use it the correct way. So again, these bits are for manicure purposes, manicure or pedicure purposes. So services like you need to push back the cuticle, you wanna do a nice clean up underneath the cuticle area, like for a Russian manicure. Um, I do not recommend these bits to be used on acrylics or gels because they're not strong enough to do so. They're only good for natural nails and cuticle pushback. So I wanna stress that point because if you do use them on acrylic or hard gel or um, hybrid gel, it's gonna wear them down really quickly and that's not the purpose of this bit. So this bit here is um, a nice bit to have for if you do a lot of manicures and for those cuticles that are really, really hard to push back and to remove. Okay, so I'm gonna also use this on Jackie today. Okay, so I, I'll list all the use and what they're good for also. Um, it's all on the website, so you guys can have a look at that. Okay, so let's see. So did I get any colors recommended by my viewers today yet? I'm gonna look back in the comments. So what color do you guys think I should be using today for Jackie's nails? <laughs> We have these different neon colors. This is gonna be like a, a nail or two nails because we're gonna be doing a couple of different things on the other fingers. Purple and yellow, guys, purple and yellow. If no one says anything, we're gonna use purple and yellow. <laughs> purple and yellow. You want purple, I want yellow. That's what we should do. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use these two colors. These are from our neon glow collection. So they also glow in the dark which I love. Let me move the camera up just a little bit so I can have some room. Okay, how's the lighting for everyone today? I think it's really nice. I can see very good. Okay, so some of the other things that I'll be working with is going to be, we need our top and base. This is from the TAP Hybrid Gel Collection. So we have our clear tube. Uh, we have the French white, which I'm going to use to marbleize, I think, some of these colors that we picked out. Purple and yellow. Yeah. And I need my alcohol solution jar. So the liquid that we're going to be using today is going to be just regular rubbing alcohol. So I have here 99% alcohol solution. Um, try not to use anything that's under 70% because what happens is the brush and the, well, the brush will stick to the hybrid gel. And you will find that out quickly. So if you have 50% and if that's all you have, it does work, but it doesn't work as well. 99% works really well. Like this just slips right through. Like it really helps me to shape the hybrid very easily. So I'm gonna pour that in this jar a little bit later. You're gonna need your hybrid gel brush. So one side is going to be the brush end. The other side is going to be our metal spatula, okay? So we're gonna be using that. So there's not a lot to this hybrid gel system, which is great because there's only a few steps that we need to do. Um, color variation, we don't have a lot in right now, but we do have purple and yellow. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, I will do purple and yellow. It's already out, Jackie. We're gonna do purple and yellow. <laughs> I'm she's, so excited. She's afraid that I'm gonna switch on her. <laughs> Look, I feel like I'm getting choices now. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> and then I'll be using some gel colors and some, I think these crystals oh. are beautiful. Oh, you know that. Oh, this one right here, that's my favorite. And some glitter. So we're going to do something fun today because today is um, part of our class schedule that I start off with the very basic application in the beginning of the month and as we go through the weeks i uh, enhance it a little bit more and start adding different techniques that you can do with the hyper gel system okay so another thing that we will be using is going to be our led lamp and make sure that it is 48 watts or higher mm -hmm. so if you have 80 watts 72 watts that's perfectly fine as long as it's 48 or higher I might say green. <laughs> green. I love green. I like green too. We'll save green for another day. Okay, so first off, let's see your hands. Okay, but please don't judge me, guys. I promise you, I've been painting 
and you know they look really bad so <laughs> i warned her i said if you're gonna show your nails oh, on camera you have so to bad. tell us why sorry okay so that's so you see okay yellow, yeah we yellow. still have some extras yeah all right but they don't look bad okay so i'm gonna be using my shine e-file today which is great because this is very nice it has different speed and the speed that we're going to be using first is going to be a low speed because we're going to prep the nail beds okay let me see all of my bits where are my bits okay first off let me get all my tools ready okay move my hand while you're doing that okay all right so let's just open up our product and our implements i have my brush ready to go i always put everything in a st sterile box so when i use it for a, a new model a new customer is always ready so then i got my implements that i sterilized already pick that out yeah with the russian bits um, as i do this process you'll see that there's going to be very little cuticle to no cuticle at all that we need to trim because we're not necessarily supposed to trim the cuticles that we only are supposed to remove any um, dry skin or any hard skin around the cuticle area and we could do that with the Russian bits They're so cute. they got yellow and purple okay so let's see here I had it already okay so I'm gonna use the different type of Russian manicure bits See, the first one we're going to be using is going to be this prepping bit. I'm going to put that into my hand piece. Make sure we lock it into place. And you don't have to insert it all the way in. Leave a little bit of that neck showing so that way it can run easier on your e-file. So I'm going to turn this. So with the Russian bits, you don't want to speed up too fast. So I will not go more than... I'm going to try 9,000 RPM, which means it's running, the spinning of the bit is 9,000 times per minute. So I'm going to use this to push back the cuticle area. You see what I'm doing right now is holding it as flat as possible and sort of pushing at the same time. Let's move this a little bit. I'm gonna try to just follow the round of her cuticle, not really creating any damage. So we're gonna go through a couple of different bits, but this is the first bit that I like to use because it's nice and it's a little bit wider. So it's safe for me to just also surface file a little bit of any extra gel that is left on her nail bed. So we're gonna push back just a little bit. Okay, just around the corners there. Oh, you guys can see really well today. Okay, we're gonna push this up a little bit here. So hold it as flat as possible. We have several different bits that I'm gonna go through to even push back the cuticles even more. So don't try to do everything with this one particular bit. And the, these are only cuticle and natural nail bits. So remember, don't try to remove any gels with that. That right here that's left over, I'm gonna remove that with a different bit and one of our tongue skin bits, not the diamond bits. I think by, by the end of the night, Jackie's going to have nightmares about bits. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just working around the cuticle, doing a dry push up with my bit. And you want to turn their fingers so you can see clearly what you're doing. So these are extra gel that got a yellow tint because she was painting her her door mm -hmm. 
with the yellow paint so that's not because of the hybrid gel turning yellow no not at all yeah and it came out really good too by the way the bedroom doors <laughs> <laughs> i didn't get to see yeah i'll show you pictures they came out really pretty i did the two bedroom doors and the bathroom door so you guys see right there so what i'm doing i'm just going over it a couple times to push up the cuticle and if it doesn't come off it's okay it's just loosening it up with this bit because I have a couple other bits that I'm going to be using and we're performing a Russian manicure before we're applying a full set of hybrid gel nails on her today so I'm going to go ahead and remove this bit a new one. Oh, okay okay so this one is a little bit finer this is going to go underneath the cuticle a little bit but not enough to do any damage. So we're gonna turn that at a low speed as well. So everyone's uh, e-file is different. So you wanna turn it at a low speed where you don't feel any vibration with this bit. See, now I'm able to get up underneath a little bit more. And try not to angle your bit. That way you're not damaging the natural nails. Because when you're doing this type of work on the nail bed, it actually will allow you to create a little bit more space to do the fill or the full set. And your client can last about a week or two longer with her set. And also you, you wanna keep that in mind because if you're doing this extra work, you need to charge for that extra time. So with the Russian manicure and a full set, I would charge an additional $20 for that minimum because it's gonna take you 15 to 20 minutes to prep the nail beds. And they'll see a difference. I think this is the first time I've ever done this on Jackie's nails where she can see. So, yeah. doesn't yeah. it feel good though? It does. Normally you say my cuticles are good so I don't have to have this, but mm -hmm. I've been kind of rough on my hands the last week. <laughs> So let me just brush away a little bit so you guys can see without the dust. So you see how I expose that cuticle dry skin there? So we're gonna go clean up underneath there. Okay. So then we just are done with the second bit there. So I'm gonna skip the second, the third bit because that one is almost the same, but just a little bit more narrow. So if they have even more dry cuticle that you cannot push back, you wanna go ahead and use this finer under the nail, under the cuticle bit. So now we're gonna use our nib bit. It has a funny name. <laughs> it looks like a little nib, doesn't it? <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> little nib bit. So this is this bit is not gonna go underneath the cuticle. It's gonna go now almost a little bit on top of the cuticle. And it has a little bit more grit, so it's... But it doesn't hurt at all. It doesn't hurt, right? Mm-mm, not at all. It takes all that extra skin off, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also around the corners, too, because I, a lot of times around the corner is where a lot of clients will have that hangnail. And if that's hay now is still there, it's gonna prevent the hybrid to lay flat and adhere to the area. So that way, if it does prevent it, then it's going to lift a little easier. Let me just brush away so you guys can see more clear. If you guys just joined, thank you for watching. And today's class is focused on these different e-filing bits and what they're good for. And also we will be doing um, half a full set of a hybrid gel enhancement on Jackie's nails today. So I'm not creating any indentation on the natural nail. I'm still just surface filing very lightly and removing any of the dry cuticle 
that I see and pushing back at the same time. That way I can create a little bit more room to do the full set so she could get more wear out of the nails. Okay, so now you guys can see all the dry skin that we pushed up. So I have another bit that I'll be using to remove that. You can see clearly there. So the next bit I'll be using is going to be this tapered ball bit. Okay, you don't wanna put it all the way in, you wanna leave it a little bit exposed and run it at a very slow speed. So no more than, on this e-file, I'm not gonna do no more than 7,000 RPM. So this bit here is what's going to remove those dry cuticles off the skin. Because if I'm doing all this prep work on her cuticle, I'm not gonna need to do all the cuticle cleanup at the very end. So either way, you're not wasting time and you're not saving time because either way, you're gonna have to do this type of cleanup, either before or after. But I feel like doing it before really gives you a nice surface to work with. And Jackie has soft skin compared to some other clients that I've done. So you wanna make sure that you have very low pressure when you're using these type of bits. Some clients that have more dry skin or more coarse cuticle, then you can speed up a little bit more if you need to. And the product that we use is, um, we're only going to be using alcohol for the solution. So there will be no burning or any stinging when we apply the product. How does that feel? Feels good. Feels okay? Yeah. So these are bits that we use instead of using the cuticle nipper to cut the cuticle. Some clients actually don't like their cuticles to be trimmed, but they do, they're do. they okay with us pushing back their cuticles. Okay, so, so any dry area like right here, you can go ahead and use this nib, not the nib bit. <laughs> this is the tapered cone, tapered ball bit. Okay, so I need those dry area. Because then I, later I won't have to do that. I know Jackie's warm with all the lights here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy though. <laughs> so this bit here, now we're able to push up the cuticle and remove it even a little bit more. Okay, these ones look good. that one there once in a while you have a, a tough one that you could just trim off okay so now that we prep the cuticle now we're going to prep the nail bed so with the nail bed we're going to use our other bits Let's see my other these ones. Okay. So now we're going to use bits from our carbide, um, from our Tunskin rainbow set here. So I'm going to use the mandrel bit. I'm going to prep the nail bed with our medium grit. So when you're prepping the nail bed for the hybrid, you want to use the medium when you're 
filing the surface to smooth everything out, then you'll use the fine bit. Okay, so this process here, we're not going to do any more filing on the cuticle or near the cuticle area. I want to run my e-file really low. It's only about 6,000 RPM. And we're going to lightly file in one direction. This is only to help rough up the surface a little bit so the base gel of the hybrid can stick well to the nail bed. If it's too shiny, if it's too smooth, it will also have an issue with um, its staying on as well. It might not adhere as well, so you wanna make sure that you remove any old gel product. That's natural oils that are on your nails, right? Yes, because we're doing everything at a dry state so you don't want to add any moisture so if you're going to perform any type of manicure at first do not use any moisture so you have to do everything dry okay let me see this i have these two areas there okay so if she has any free edge you want to go ahead and shape that as well We're gonna add a nail extension on her nails today. And she's got good news because she just got word that she could go back to work. Yay! <laughs> so we have to make her nails pretty. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tips from our almond box. And these are tips that you can convert to stiletto, to almond, to coffin. Like this? Mm-hmm, mm. this here is just a tapered, uh, coffin shape here. I like that. Can you wear them this long? Um, but these tips you can thumb. give you pretty good length even if we just cut off the the tip area. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue in the center and then hold my tip down. I usually like to use uh, my curved nipper to hold down both sides of the nail bed. That way it holds down the tip and it gives me a nice flush. And make sure that if you want to apply glue evenly, you just take the tip of your glue tube and just move the glue to the corners. That way you're not really pushing any more glue into the, the tips. A lot of times one drop of glue is just enough. So again, how I apply my tips are I hold my one tip with my left hand I angle it a little bit. I take my the tip of my glue. I apply one dot in the center and then I push down, making sure that it's still aligned. And then I use my curved tweezers and I push down on both sides. So that just helps me know that both sides will have the good adhesion. There's not gonna be any lifting on the corners. And then if I have extra glue, I just guide it with my the tip of my tube. Gluing tip is actually also a technique that needs to be practiced to get it right. And there's, you know, different ways that you can glue the tip, but my technique is just one way I want to show you how you can do it without having to flip the tip over and then flipping it back because sometimes by that time you kind of lose track of where this the nail bed and how straight you can apply the tips so see i'm just going to take that extra glue and move it to the corner and that should be just perfect okay so we want to make sure that on both sides of the nail bed that you don't see any of their natural nails exposed You've got really good nail beds, Jackie, for, to fit these tips. They're like perfect. <laughs> I don't even need to customize them. Awesome. And just so you know, these tips will come along with our uh, French collection kit if you purchase the whole system. And it comes with an LED lamp. It comes with everything that you need, really. Some nail art, tools. That's awesome. And even for our limit uh, amount of supply whatever I have left of my alcohol, I will also include a four ounce jar so that way you guys can get started. So 
I'll also include this jar of, of alcohol because I know sometimes it's, we can't even find it right now. Actually, I was the other day at uh, Walmart, I was able to find alcohol, but it was 70%. Yeah, uh, and that's the least amount you can use, right? The yes. 70%. Yeah, so a 70% alcohol solution is f perfect. If you use up to 99%, it's no problem at all. You're just gonna see that it works a little bit better. So here, you wanna always make sure that you're sitting in front of the finger and where you're gluing the nail tip. So make sure that you see a perfect angle. Okay, I'm gonna use my tweezers to hold down on the sides there. And if you have any extra glue, you can just take the tip of your tube here and just move it and guide it into the corners. That way you're not squeezing anymore, but you're just using up all that glue that's in the center. Okay, so that's how you would glue the nail tips there. Okay, so before we get started, I'm gonna see what shape we're gonna be you doing today. I think maybe to leave these two stiletto and these ones coffin because you have to go back to work. Yep. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do this for now and then. All right, so first step is we do need to remove the shine off the tips. If you guys go right now to apply the base gel, the base gel might not stay as well on the shiny surface. So just like the natural nail beds, we do have to deshine that area. So I'm gonna run my sanding band bit really low and then just removing the shine. So when you're filing on any surface that is not the natural nail bed, you can file in different direction. It's perfectly fine because all we're doing right now is removing the shine. So you want to do this step quickly. Make sure the glue is dry. Okay. So it's very similar to how we prep the nail bed for uh, applying acrylic or applying dipping powder. So I'm gonna just remove all the dust. Actually, this is a good opportunity to use my little duster here. So I'm gonna <laughs> use my my mini dust bit. <laughs> Thank you. You wanna run that um, not too slow, but also not too fast. So on my e-file, I go about 12,000 RPM, and it just removes all that dust in those underneath the cuticle because we were able to push back with the Russian bits. I know that they're exposed, so any dust that's underneath there, you want to remove it so that way the base gel can stick onto the natural nose even better. I think sometimes that could be one of the issues of why it lifts easily is because we're not taking care of the cuticle area. We're leaving a lot of dry nails still. And then also if you don't clean off the dust well, then you have dust on the nail bed too. Okay, so the first step we're going to be using for the hybrid gel system is our base gel. So this base gel has primer and bonder already built in. So you don't have to do one any extra step because the nail bed is already dried. It's already dehydrated. So we wanna just take our brush and apply a nice thin layer starting from the cuticle and applying all the way through the extension. If you have too much on your brush, please remove it. So that way you don't end up with too much on the nail bed. And this formula, it's great because it is a little bit thicker, so it doesn't run into the cuticle. And it helps to self-level the natural nail beds too. Okay, don't miss any corners. Anywhere that you see dry, it's going to be an issue. That means that the hybrid will not stick as well to the nails. I hear a lot of clients say they love this system because it feels very light on their natural nails as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming from being a nail tech for almost 20, oh my gosh, over 20 years, let's just say. 
I've worked with acrylics for most of that time. And I can tell you that now that I've converted to only doing a hybrid gel in my salon, it really feels great because there's no odor, there's no smell, there's none of that toxic, you know, uh, aroma in the air. And clients come back and tell me that they feel really light on their nails. It's like, you could tell, you could tell them how you, you like the hybrid. Oh yeah, it's way different than, and way better than having acrylic on your nails. It, everything about it is better. Even gel, it's better than gel. It's not as heavy. Um, you don't break them as quick. You know, it's really hard to break them, not except for me. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've been breaking them because you use your thumbs as tools. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> yes. So that's, that's on me. That's not the product for sure. But, yeah, it's a lot better. You don't have to, you know, you don't, you don't have that odor, that strong odor. It's awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little bit of my paper towel here. I'm going to grab all the different hybrid gel colors that we're going to be using. Okay, so I've got the purple, white, and the clear because I'm going to do some encapsulation there. And I have my alcohol solution jar, which I'm going to fill with just my regular rubbing alcohol. And this is 99% proof. And you don't need a lot, so I don't have anything in my jar right now. So I'm going to just pour in... Just a tiny bit. I would say it's about a tablespoon. It's about a quarter. A, a quarter of it. A quarter of... Yeah, a quarter of the jar. No, not even. Yeah, yeah about a third or a quarter. Yeah. And there's going to be Such extra. Amount. Yeah. yeah, you. I mean, you do need enough to where we can clean the brush. So, for and each... What do you do once you're done? I dump it out. You dump it out. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to wake up my brush because I've had it sitting for a little while. So I just want to clean and squeeze out any product that was sitting in there. I'm sure this is a new brush, so I just want to wake it up. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush out first. Okay, so the first application we're going to be doing is a clear one. So with the clear, I heard many of you have messaged us and said that with the clear tube, sometimes once you get a little bit lower, it's hard to squeeze the product out of the tube because this tube comes with a flip cap that you can squeeze it through. So if it, it's a little too hard for you to squeeze through there, I just recommend that you just remove the cap and the hole is a little bit wider so it's easier to squeeze out and that's perfectly fine okay so I'm going to use just that much for that entire nail so if you were to calculate the cost per nail it costs you no more than 10 cents to apply this product on the nail and if you're charging your client $65 for a set that's really not a big investment at all so we're going to now apply the product smooth it out with your brush and I'm using the alcohol solution just to help my brush not stick to the product because her nails are a little bit longer I'm just gonna put my finger underneath there to brace it so it could be a little bit more sturdy and then on both sides, I'm just gonna tap and smooth in my shape so don't overwork it I think one of the problems if you're having an issue with the product bubbling is because you're touching the product too much. Because what the alcohol solution does with the product is it'll evaporate, it'll sit back up on the surface. And if you have too much alcohol on the nails, then when you cure it in the light, it's gonna cure it with those bubbles. So remember, once you get your shape perfected to where you, know, you can just use a little bit of filing, leave it alone. Move on to the next nail. And you just wanna check the cuticle area. Okay, so you're able to move on to the next nail without curing the product right away. So this next nail here, let me do a nice uh, combination. We're going to do marbling with the purple. Just going to apply a little bit of the product on there. This is for Jackie's request. She wants purple and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to add a little bit of white to bring out the marble. 
and I always like to add a little bit of clear as well. So the clear will give it that kind of stone design. Okay, so I'm gonna dip my end of my spatula in here and I'm gonna to start to marbleize the product. I wouldn't over marbleize the hybrid because you don't wanna mix it too much. You wanna just marble enough to where you can see some sort of design flow going on. And then you wanna tap the product into place. So I'm gonna work around the cuticles first. If I got too much alcohol, I wanna dry out my brush. Remember, don't over tap the product. So I'm gonna work really close to the cuticle, making sure that I apply a nice thin um, layer there. Because this is 100% a product that you can control. You don't have to worry about it drying or rutting or bleeding into each other. So it's great. So if you wanna change up that little marble design a little bit more, you can go ahead and do that. And this is glow in the dark, so Jackie's gonna see this tonight. <laughs> and I forgot to tell one of my clients that I use a glow in the dark hybrid on her and she went home and she got a little freaked out. <laughs> Okay, so then you want to just tap it into place. Use your whole brush if you're going to smooth out the surface. I'm going to use my finger on the bottom to brace the nail because it's a little longer. If it's shorter, then you don't have to do that. Okay, any extra, you can go ahead and remove it. And this product is really easy to file, so if you do have a little bit of bulkiness, don't worry because you can just easily shape that at the end. Okay, so that looks good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have Jackie flash care because these are a little bit longer nails and I don't want her to um, accidentally mess up and touch something. So the next couple nails, we're going to go ahead and maybe just do a couple clear ones because I want to encapsulate some glitter in there. Okay, that should be good. I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a, a nice thin layer of the clear, just so I could have some sort of tacky surface before I apply some of my glitter. Because remember, this product will stay tacky and sticky until we cure it in the light. So I'm just gonna create a nice thin foundation. And then I'm gonna apply my glitter that I chose. I don't have yellow now. I pulled out purple. <laughs> Let's see. So any questions so far? Ooh, yellow right there. Which one? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these uh, yellow flakes here. This is my cosmic circle yellow. Or actually, no, that's our mermaid collection. Okay, so because my brush is a little sticky, I'm gonna just go ahead and grab my glitter from the brush onto the glitter right away there. I'm gonna do a little bit of an ombre. And then these flakes here, I'm just gonna put them on my paper so I can see how much I got. A little bit goes a long way, so it's great because these will create those little water bubbles and give it a, a little bit of that um, iridescent look to her nails and also showing the transparency of the hybrid. Let's see, that looks fun. Can everybody see that? It's really so shiny. Pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna push that down just a tiny bit. Use a little alcohol so it doesn't stick to my spatula there. Okay, so let's give you a little bit more of that up here. I'm doing a little bit of ombre, so I don't want anything to just stop. It needs to blend. Okay, so maybe I repeat that on the thumb. So before I cure that one, I'm gonna go ahead and apply one straight clear overlay on her pointing finger. So you wanna focus on the cuticle area first. Angle your brush to 45 degree angle, just using the tip of the brush and working around the cuticle. And then tapping the rest of the product into place as you tap, you're gonna smooth with your brush and using the alcohol to help you glide on the product. So if it's too dry, you'll notice it because your brush is going to stick. If it's too wet, make sure you dry out your brush and then continue. 
So once you get the use, um, the hang on, the hang of it, on using the hybrid gel system, you're going to know mentally how much product you need per finger. So that's why you see when I apply the product, I don't have any waste whatsoever because I've already done this quite a bit. But if you do have a problem and you apply too much product at first and you can see after getting halfway down the nail, go ahead and just remove that product and save it or apply it onto the next nail and then use it then. Don't try to overcompensate and, and use whatever you have. So if you have too much, remember to remove it. If you have too little, you can always add to it before you finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and flash cure that. So when you flash cure, you can just cure the hybrid for 10 seconds and then move on to the next nail. So let's do another marble just to incorporate the design. So if you like to, um, yeah, let's go ahead and just do that. I'm gonna add, let me see this color here. Let me add more purple this time. And then we can also add a little bit of glitter. So the technique that I'm showing you guys today is a little bit of more advanced than a couple days earlier. But this is something that you can definitely do right away because it's not hard at all. Because the product doesn't dry on you, so it allows you all the time in the world to fix your shape and your look before you cure it. And if you're not happy with the nail, go ahead and remove everything and then start over if you're doing something that you don't really like. But Honestly, with marbleizing, everything looks good. <laughs> That's the beauty of marble. It's supposed to not look like the other nail. Okay, so I marbleize it away from the cuticle area because I then have some room where I can push up. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap this into place. I like how this looks right here. So I'm gonna leave this clear because after I flash here this nail. I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter and I'm also gonna encapsulate it with the clear. So if I like a certain marble design, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Because remember, we marbleize the design all the way through that product. So even if you file off anything that's uneven, you still have the design underneath. So make sure when you do marbleize that you mar marbleize all the way through the nail and not just on top of the hybrid. Okay, let's go ahead and flash cure that. That looks really pretty. I want to add some of these glitter again. So I always want to clean off my metal spatula side so that way it doesn't get all over my fingers. Okay, so just flash cure that. So to add a little bit of that glitter, I'm just going to take my clear hybrid maybe just spread it out a little bit because i just need a tiny little bit just enough to where the surface stays sticky it's still not the shape that i want yet but i just want it a little bit sticky so that way i can add the glitter and try different techniques because sometimes your technique may work out better or if it gives you a different look and that's the beauty about this product, it's very versatile. So what I'm showing you is just basically a one style that you can try. Look at that, I love this these little mermaid circles. They're so pretty. They are. And the purple and yellow just go so pretty together, right? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Okay, so I want to get a little bit of that on there because it looks very mermaidy, looks mm -hmm. like scales. Okay, so we're gonna flash cure that, and I'm gonna show you guys how to retain the glitter design like this. Go ahead. So before you apply the clear to encapsulate the glitter that we just applied, I recommend that we apply one thin layer of the base gel because this base gel is going to help seal the glitter and that flake before we apply the hybrid. Because the hybrid gel is a little bit thicker, so it's going to move some of that glitter onto the areas where we don't have glitter. So this way it caps it, and then when we 
encapsulate it with the hybrid to build a shape, then it's going to look even better. Okay, so just flash here that for 10 seconds. Okay, so one more step with this hybrid clear. Okay, so I'm gonna encapsulate this here. So make sure we start at the cuticle area. Give it a nice firm push down first. And then if it's close to the cuticle, then you wanna make sure you thin it out. Give enough towards the middle here where the stress point is. Apply enough product to where there's gonna give it that strength. And also build that little apex there. And then use the side of your brush to clean the side of the nails. <coughs> And if you have Excuse any me. extra, you go ahead and just cut that off with the metal side. Okay, so this here, now we're going to be able to cap this. So I'm going to apply it close to the cuticle area. I always start at the cuticle area. So apply it close to the cuticles, but not all the way yet because we want to make sure we have room to tap the product and thin it out okay so you want to dip your brush into the alcohol to help you move and glide the product with the solution so the tapping and the smoothing is consistent you basically do that both in one stroke so you're going to tap and smooth almost at the same time and you're able to control the thickness and how thin you want to apply the product with pressure. Okay, so if you have extra there on the tip, just go ahead and cut that off. Okay, just one quick clean around the cuticle area. Make sure I don't have any extras. Okay, so that one, I'm just make sure. I think I need a little bit on the side there for my marble. So that's a good thing. If you ever need to add a little bit more, go ahead and just take a tiny bit and add to the existing nail because it's going to adhere to each other. Okay, let's go ahead and cure that. So that was the basic uh, application of all the hybrid gel that we just used today. Then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to seal the hybrid before we shape it. Hi everybody, for those of you that are just joining in today, I'm continuing to do um, half a full set on Jackie's nails and this is going to be something fun and different because we're encapsulating glitter, we have mermaid scales here and the color choice today is purple and yellow. <laughs> Which is so pretty and it, it goes is so very well pretty. Together. Okay, so now I'm going to put away my brush. Make sure you guys clean it really, really well. Just get all the hybrid gel out of the bristles. Give it a nice clean. I do this a couple times. Because even if you think you clean it well and you put the cap on there, that gel may harden your brush so I'm going to give it a nice clean before I put it back into my brush cap okay okay to use you <laughs> okay so the next step we're going to do is we're going to seal the hybrid now so by sealing it we're going to create that nice shiny hard surface so when we go to shape the nails it'll be a lot easier and this also will help any of those air pocket areas that's been created by the alcohol solution when it dried to be sealed as well. You guys can't really tell now, but there's that little inhibition layer and that's just from the alcohol solution um, drying to the surface of the nail bed. So the gel is cured, it's hard, but then the alcohol left it with that sticky residue. See how pretty that is with just the clear? And this nail is like a party nail. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
gonna look really good. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cure that for 60 seconds. So with the top gel, when you seal it, make sure we cure that for 60 seconds. Okay, let me just move all this. So now's a good time for me to show you how to use these bits and for what, um, what portion of the filing stage that you need to shape the nails with. So we have here, we're not going to use this bit because we're not removing any product. So the next bit that we're going to be using is going to be our safety bit. And this is going to be for the surface filing. But before I use that one, I'm going to use the tapered cone bit. And this is great to go around the cuticle area. Just leave that open. Okay, so we're going to cure the top gel to seal the nails for 60 seconds. And then now we're ready to shave. You see how this, the surface is nice and shiny? But not sticky. But not sticky, yeah. Because yeah. also when you leave that sticky inhibition layer and you use your drill bits to file around the nail surface, that bit is going to get clogged with the gel. So that's also an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and just shape my sides. These two are different. They're the stiletto shape. And that's very common with my clients, actually. They like to have different shape on different nails. So we try to incorporate a design that will look good for that. So this is a stiletto shape. So both sides will be tapered all the way to the point. This here is a cone shape. I mean, the, um, what do you call this? A coffin shape. Coffin, yeah. So it's a square, but then it's tapered at the tips. They're not too tapered. So it's almost like a ballerina. <laughs> There's so many names. <laughs> yeah. I haven't done this on you yet, but this one is called Pyramid. Mm. That's really funky. So it's like, is it the square at the top and it goes that way? Or it how is it that? actually goes up into a pyramid point on the top of the nails. Mm. It's pretty cool. One day. Right. So I'm using a finer um, hand file because this product, it is softer than regular acrylic. So you don't have to put so much pressure. So this, the grit here is um, 180. If you have a file that's 100 grit, that's fine too. That's more coarse. So you just put less pressure. Okay, just wanna go ahead and check both sides. Make sure that we have it removed from the skin. Okay, this is a very easy product to shape as well. So let me remove the dust so you guys can see more clearly. So if you took your time to apply the product very nice and neat around the cuticle area, then there won't be much filing that, and shaping that we need to do around the skin. Can you guys see that? So for anyone who's a beginner using the hybrid gel system, take your time. Um, even if it's the first a couple times that you try the product because it's not gonna dry on you, so you don't have to rush. You wanna just make sure that you control your product and shape it really clean so that way when it does come down to shaping we don't have to use a lot of this e-filing so this bit here is our tapered cone bit i'm going to turn the speed up to about has to run a little bit of medium speed so about 15,000 rpm and that's around the cuticle area i'm going to gently look at the cuticle area and if there's any gel that may have leaked a little bit there I'm just going to remove that and lay the bit as flat as possible and then just kind of follow the cuticle shape this will also help it from lifting because you don't have any gel sitting on top of the skin 
Okay, so I was able to apply really, really close to the cuticle, but not touching the cuticles. And that's one technique you wanna also practice is applying as thin as you can without touching the cuticle area. Because her cuticles are cleaned up already because we did that Russian manicure with the Russian bits. Her cuticles are great. They're not going to grow as quickly. So you don't have to apply the product that close to the, the cuticle area. Okay, so you wanna push back and see if there's anything that you need to clean up very lightly. So with this bit is great because you can see exactly where you're moving the tip of the bit. I'm gonna push the skin down. Yeah, like I, I was starting to say earlier, I've been doing nails for almost 20, four years now and I started off as a cosmetologist. Well, I am a licensed cosmetologist and I started off doing hair. So I did hair for a couple years, but then I realized it wasn't what I really loved because my mom had a salon and I helped her out sometimes. And I just realized doing the nails was a little bit more of my thing because I was able to be more creative. So then I got to um, experience running the salon and managing it and also doing nails and getting a, a big clientele. And so I stopped doing hair. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you think about it, nail clients come back every two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Hair is every eight to hair ten Hair clients, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So building a hair clientele is amazing as well if you can do it, but it takes you a little bit longer. And, you know, sometimes a client can skip a mm -hmm. service. Yeah, and also, you you know, like you said, you can't be as creative with other people's hair as you can with their nails, that's for sure. But if you can do both, by all means, do both. I did both for a very long time until I just realized, you know, nails is more my thing. Mm -hmm. And I love educating, so I was able to train all the girls in the salon, and, you know, they listened, first of all. <laughs> and we were able to incorporate a lot of different technique and products into the salon for all of us to make more money. Christina said her too. <laughs> hey, Christina. Christina said, me too. Started out doing hair and decided to do nails. I love it more. Same here. I do do hair only for people that I know or myself, of course. I haven't visited a hairdresser in probably 10 years now. <laughs> if I find one, then I'll go and get stuck with her. But I'm also so busy. But yeah, I mean, it's a good thing that we do have all the skills of a full cosmetologist because we can understand how the client feels, you know, in either with hair, nails, skin. I love doing skincare as well, facials, things like that. But nails is definitely a lot more lucrative. It's more fun. You know, these times that are hard, I feel like the clients coming back to the nail salons are a lot quicker. Yeah. Yes, so I'm just gonna use this particular um, bit for the cuticle area. So for the surface of the nail bed, we're going to use our safety bit. So I'm gonna switch off the bits now. Remember, these are tongue skin grooves, so they're a lot more durable than just your regular carbide metal bits. So with this bit here, because I'm not gonna be going around the cuticle area, I can speed up my e-file a little bit faster. So I'm gonna run this speed above 20,000 RPM, so for me on this, e-file I'm comfortable with 23 to 25,000 rpm so that that is a fast speed so with the fast speed you don't have to put a lot of pressure but still be able to efficiently file the surface of the nail bed for it to be really nice and smooth so because the nail is a little bit longer I can do an up and down motion I'm just utilizing the center of this bit as well. If you guys can see the marking of the file, it's um, just the very middle of it and using the entire bit to help me with the entire surface of the nail, making sure that I can give it a nice, even 
smooth finish. And this is a fine grit, so the bit that I'm using, you see that it's removing product, but also at the same time smoothing the nails. So it's not too hard, not too, not too um, much grooves in the in the bits at all. So when I get to the tip of the nail, I'm gonna just do an up and down motion. So I always take a look at the side of my nail to see if I need to do any more cleanup. So if the speed is too fast for you at a 20,000 RPM, you can lower it down to 15 to 18, but then again, you have to move your hands a little bit faster because that bit is not going to spin as fast now. So if you're having an issue with the bit getting stuck on the nail, it's because either one, the speed is not fast enough, or two, you're not moving your bit quick enough on the surface. So because I'm, I turn the speed down, I have to move quicker. So I'm just filing off one direction. Even though I move it back to this direction, I'm really just removing product in one direction. So I move my hand to the left, but then I bring it back to my right without touching the nail bed. So make sure you practice with your bits before you use it on a real finger. <laughs> you have, there's many practice fingers out there. <laughs> so this is a good way for you to see. You see the, shi the shiny surface versus the dull surface there. So anywhere that I see that is shiny, I know that I want to go ahead and try to smooth that area off. And this bit is going to help me do that. And that's also a reason why I like applying the top gel on the nails before I shape because it really helps me to see what needs to get removed. So this thumb here is a little thick, so I'm gonna turn up my speed. So it's about 23,000 RPM now, so it's faster. This is really pretty now. <laughs> Very pretty. Because we encapsulated the sequins and the glitter with the clear, you know that we're not gonna have a problem filing it off. Okay, so around the tip area. And you tell me that you used your thumb as a tool, so I'm not gonna make it as thin. <laughs> So for clients that want a really, really thin looking nail and this length, I would tell you not to recommend to do this for them <laughs> because they're going to break it. You can't, you have to have some structure with a length like this. So if the client prefers to something a lot thinner, you may want to recommend either acrylic or um, dipping powder because you can do it thin, but they're not, they don't last as strong as this hybrid. So for clients that want to wear longer nails, I recommend you give them at least this much thickness for it to last. And really the product is so light that it doesn't feel heavy. Not at all. So even it being a little bit of structure on there, they're not gonna complain. They're gonna complain if it breaks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so next step is I'm gonna just take a buffer and buff the rest of the surface. Actually, one step that I actually like to do, I forgot to show you guys, is I like to take my mandrel bit again, but then this time I'm gonna switch out the, the bit grid. I'm gonna use a finer bit. So I'm gonna use my 240 sanding band, and this is finer, so it's gonna help me to smooth the surface. So I'm going to turn this at a low speed. So anytime you're using the satin band bit, you want to turn it as low as you can possibly go with your e-file without it stopping. So now I'm just going to quickly. So instead of buffing with my regular buffer, I'm going to use this e-file bit to do so. Mm. And it's quicker and easier.
Does that feel good? It does. <laughs> <laughs> I actually mm -hmm. never like to buff nails. <laughs> I've always not like to use the buffer to buff the nail beds. Yeah. A lot of time it flies out of my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to do it so quickly. You know? Yeah. So I'm just going to e file buff the nails. Okay, that's all you need to do. And now we're going to take this cute little <laughs> dust <so> bit. <laughs> First, let me remove the dust with my regular brush here just to see what we have and I like to brush upward just so I can remove all that extra okay oh, so good to have nails again <laughs> <laughs> so so far they look pretty good they're awesome okay so now I'm gonna take this uh, dust bit and you could turn the speed up to about 15,000 RPM. Let's see how that goes. So just test out your machine if it's too, because um, some of them just have a dial instead of a, uh, a number on there, so I can't help you gauge that. But this brush here, you can go right underneath the cuticle area, and it just really helps all that debris go away. Doesn't that feel good? It does feel good. <laughs> Did I tell you earlier, like, if it's like a toothbrush? Uh, no, you didn't say that, <laughs> but it does feel like a toothbrush kind it's of. like yeah. you got this deep cleaning going on right now. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I do like it. Okay, that looks really good there. So pretty. And just quickly on the top there. I'm gonna do my whole house with this. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna create a, a huge one like that, right? <laughs> I'm gonna do the car, the house. <laughs> All right, so that looks really good there. Oops, what? Can you put those back in there for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see one piece of glitter that won't get off. So. <laughs> All right, do you guys like that so far? So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that with alcohol now. If you're in a regular salon, you could ask your client to wash their hands because that would be even better. It's pretty, that thumb. Mm -hmm. It's very, very pretty. That is a nice shape on that pinky. Oh, okay. she said, Christina said, thank you for using the brush bit. Yes, I know. We always see it and we think it's so adorable, but the proper way to use it is right before you uh, finish with the nails. So that way, if there's any extra dust underneath the cuticle area, then you get to remove that. And also, it helps to um, look at your shape. So if there's any more cuticle defining that you need to do with the bits, then you want to go ahead and do that right away before you, you know, wash the nails off. So one of the designs that I like to do is going to be, oh, you know what I've been watching a mm. lot? And I bet you guys are going to be so excited about this is <laughs> <laughs> using the, um, what is it? The string to do this design. And if I can find one of my strings. Oh my God, I have so much stuff in here. Chain art, you've heard of that before? Has anybody heard of the chain art before? Is it actual, an actual chain? Well, what we do is we actually just take the chain. Oh. So if you guys have chains like this, so I just need a little bit of it. So I'm gonna cut up about that much here. I'm gonna use my clippers because it's more tough to cut off the chain. Oops, that's a ring right there. Okay. Oh, this is going to be pretty. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this on one of my classes. So how this is going to work is we're going to apply a base color first. So I'm going to apply the white gel color. So you guys see how beautiful that surface is? So hybrid is really strong. It's a nice nail enhancement for anybody who wants to wear longer nails, shorter nails, 
even nail overlay just a nice thin overlay to apply the gel polish to make it last longer i have a lot of regular manicure clients who ask how can they keep their nails their gels on longer so i recommend them to use a thin layer of the hybrid so you, if you have any oopsies around the corner of the cuticle, you want to clean that first before we cure it. Nice thin layer. Even if it doesn't completely give you 100% coverage, you want to just apply a nice thin layer of the, the first layer of gel. And you don't have to apply a base gel as well with the hybrid because it's already a porous surface. You can just apply the gel polish straight onto the nails. Okay, make sure you cap the tips. I'm gonna perfect the cuticle area before we cure that. Okay, let's go ahead and put that in the dryer. So each layer of gel polish uh, is typically about 30 seconds for it to cure the LED lamp. So we're gonna be doing art with this paint. I'm gonna try two different ways because I've seen it done on YouTube and I've been really excited about it. <laughs> mm. Jackie doesn't know how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell though. <laughs> See, Christina even says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Christina's my biggest fan right now. <laughs> she She's excited, that's for sure. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you want to just cure each layer of the gel for 30. Okay, so really important for the second layer is you want to give it a nice thicker coating. And we're not going to dry this. We're going to make sure that we keep it wet. And then I'll do two techniques. So one technique first is I'm going to apply the polish on top of the nails. And then we're going to pull it with the chain. So I'm going to straight from the, the brush. Can I see? I'm going to put some color there. Ooh, I gotta get yellow because you added yellow. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not gonna use black, are you? Okay. I don't have to. Okay, so then I got this lighter lavender. So straight from the bottle, I'm gonna leave it where it's just on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna apply enough. Ooh. Make sure that it doesn't drip. <laughs> Ooh. And I've got this yellow. Yellow! Ooh. I'm so excited. She said it's gonna look so pretty. Have you? Tr has anybody tried this? Give me some thumbs up if you've tried this before. Cause I don't care how you do it, it always looks good. Why not a little bit of lime? Why not? Make it fun. This is your spring summer nails. Okay. Oh yeah, that is pretty. Okay. Just that looks pretty. Just leave it like that. <laughs> it looks artsy. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the chain and okay. we're going to carefully... Can you see? Where am I in the camera? Okay. So uh, I'm going to take... Huh? Yeah, okay. Okay, turn your hand this way a little bit maybe. All right, so I'm going to take this chain. I'm going to place it onto the nail. And I feel like the bigger the chain links, the cooler the nail looks. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. That's so cool. Drag it down this way a little bit to finish off the tip. Oh my God. Okay, let's cure that so it doesn't move. <laughs> okay, so the next technique I'm going to use is we're going to apply the color on the chain and then we're going to apply it onto the nail. So I'm going to get enough of the gel polish onto the chain first. Oop, let's do the same combination. Oh, I think I messed up. I need a green on top. Okay. Just put green on the bottom and then that way. Okay. It's almost the same, but it's not, you know? Well, I think as long as we have the colors in there, that'll yeah. be good. I want to oh, put in yeah. the... I feel like we waste more gel do doing it this way, though. I like doing the other technique where you kind of target how much polish you need. I have to get it on. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to apply a thicker layer of the base color. And you don't have to do white, but I feel like white really shows up the pigments of the gel colors. Okay. 
get a nice covering because this is it. We're not gonna be able to fix the white after this. <laughs> so then I'm gonna pick up my chain. Okay. <laughs> Don't move. I, it's hard for me to show you guys because of the angle. And then, oh, I gotta go this way. So it's gonna look a little different, I think. So you wanna make sure that the, the gel stays wet and you're gonna pull it through. Oh, I mean, it's pretty, it's different. It is pretty, it's very pretty. Okay, let me, I'm gonna go back the other way. Hang on, I'm gonna clean off my chain. So if you reuse the chain, just make sure that you get all the gel off the chain, okay? It's a little messy project. Move your finger before I touch it. <laughs> okay, so you wanna just clean off that chain that you just used, because it is reusable. Okay, and I'm gonna pull it back this way. I can pick up the color again if I want it to. Hope I don't make it look muddy. Oops, Put too much there. All right, so either way, you can have any sort of design that you want. I'm gonna finish up with a little bit of line work there. That's pretty. So that's a two different very, technique very for the chain nail art so if you want to reuse your chain all you have to do is spray it with alcohol because gel will be cleansed with alcohol so just clean it off your chain and so that way you can reuse it you don't want to have a big white spot on the neck. okay <laughs> so that's good that's really pretty. It's so I'm going to so go pretty. ahead and take a little bit of my gold here. So I'm going to use a little bit of our gold 3D texture gel to do some definition on there. I'm going to use our liner brush here. It's a really thin. And we can leave this sort of thicker and 3D looking as well. It's a very unique look. So I don't think any two chain nail design will look the same, right? That's awesome, yeah. <laughs> it's very, very different. And it looks very um, artsy, really, to me. Mm -hmm. I believe an artist thought of this because I've seen this done on bigger canvases. Imagine this like painting on your wall. Yeah, it'd be very pretty. All right, so that's using our 3D <sighs> texture gel so for the strokes. So pretty, so pretty. Okay, we're coming down to the end of this design. So after that, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit. I'm gonna show you guys how to apply these bigger 3D crystals because you definitely need to have the right product. So we're gonna use our Stick It Glue Gel here. Running out of this one, I'm gonna use my other one then. so much of them okay I've still got a new one here so this is our stick of glue gel <laughs> the little container is just so cute <laughs> all right so go ahead and remove that okay so the chain design is finished so now let's pretty. go ahead and add a couple crystals on this now we're gonna do a nice 3d crystal application there so I'm gonna take the other end of my brush, my dual liner brush. I'm gonna apply a nice generous amount of the glue gel because these are a lot bigger stones. So you wanna make sure that we have enough of a cushion for the stones to sit on. So I've got my tweezers ready. So I'm gonna pick up the stone With my fingers. 
Okay, so you wanna angle the stones and allow some of that to be exposed because what we're gonna do first is we're going to cure this. Go ahead and flash cure that. So you wanna cure it for at least five seconds so that stone is set in place but not completely dry, okay? So then we wanna continue to build around the stone because this is going to be what they call a cluster design where we just have a cluster of rhinestones and we're going to trace it out with just a little bit smaller pieces here. Okay, so you wanna always make sure that we utilize a second stone that is almost the same but smaller. I'm gonna angle that as well. And I'm gonna come back here and also put this stone there. I have another light that I wanna show you guys. So this is my flashlight LED. It's a cute, simple light that just flash cures for me. So when you're doing artwork like this, you wanna go ahead and get a lamp like this because then the client doesn't have to keep moving their fingers back and forth into the, the regular lamps. So you could just flash here and then move on to the next step. So it makes it nice and efficient, right? Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna apply a little bit more there. Okay, so now we're going to grab our smaller stones and I have my picket tool here. Mm -hmm. This one end is a wax tool end, and the other side is where I could use to pick up the, the glue gel. And it works really efficient because you can quickly pick up your stones without having to worry about the glue drying or your um, crystals moving. And that wax will last you almost forever. So I got some big pieces and some thin pieces. Excuse me. <coughs> so I recommend that you always apply the crystals with different shapes and different sizes. That way it can be a nice smooth design. And in any of those little areas where there may be some opening, I always like to put some more glue gel in there and then putting around that area more crystals because that's going to help to seal those open gaps and your hair or the clothes won't be able to be snagged, snagged underneath of that and it kind of surrounds the design a little bit too makes it look nicer okay so if you guys can see underneath this put this finger down a little bit there's that big gap there i'm gonna put a little bit of glue in that little corner because we just flash here so it's not completely 100% cure and then I'm going to just put another crystal in there just to seal that space okay so before I cure this in the LED now I'm going to take the top gel that we use for at the tap for the hybrid I'm going to use this same top gel to seal around the crystals because this is a top gel that we can use for both to seal the hybrid before we shape it and to also finalize the, the top surface to add the clear shine. So this here is so cute. It's very subtle. Mm -hmm, so pretty. And then this here. Let's just see what this looks like. It's really close to the cuticle area. And make sure that we also shine up the tips. And then one last thing I like to do is just give it a nice clean up on the sides. That way it doesn't change the shape. Okay, go ahead and clear that for one minute. So we still have a couple nails that we have to seal and complete the, the design to make sure that rhinestone stays on really well. So the next 
step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really make sure that I seal around the crystals with this product here. It's called On Point, and it's great because there's a brush end and also a needle on the tip. So if you have to get to those really hard to reach areas, then you wanna use the needle. So I have some hard to reach areas around the cuticle of this particular design, like right here. So I'm gonna use the needle side, and this is also a non-wipe shiny top gel. It's basically the glue gel, but in a thinner formula. So this gel, will help to secure the crystals into place. So any of those open areas, even like right there in the center, I squeeze a little bit more and then I trace around the crystals. I get around the cuticle and then I just trace on the sides here. Cause this is going to self level. So it's not gonna have any of that thickness. So in the cuticle area where I couldn't go with the top gel, I just use the needle to make sure that I get that on nice and shiny. Okay, so now we're, this nail here, we could go ahead and put our top gel just to seal. And make sure that it's smooth. So that gold that I applied earlier is actually a 3D textured gel. So you're gonna see a little bit of thickness there, which is fine because that's the look we're going for. So to retain the look, you don't wanna to put too much top coat to seal that, but just enough to where it's not sticky. Okay, that looks good. So we're gonna final cure that for all of it for one minute and we can see the final look. So that was fun. So pretty too. <laughs> That chain design is awesome. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> if you guys missed the chain design that I did, you can always play back the video. But try it for yourself, it's really fun. I think almost every time you do a different angle, it gives it a different look. Okay, so let's see the final design, Jackie. Dun, 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 dun. All right. You guys like that? So pretty. Well, I wanna thank you everyone for taking the time to watch our training class today. And I hope you enjoy this technique that I showed you. And if you have any questions or comment, please feel free to ask me and share in the group. And also I'll be announcing the winner of the contest that we talked about earlier this week. Um, for anybody who submitted a photo to the group of your nail work with the hybrid gel system, your name will be entered into a contest and I will pull out the name and that person will get a nice art gift by Shine and Design. So make sure you guys submit those pictures for our group. Thank you so much and everyone had enjoy the rest of your evening and have a great night. Thank Bye you. Guys. Bye now. See you guys next time.